Praise the Lord. Good morning and welcome to the Sunrise with Jesus. Francis of Assisi, before he became that great, great saint, he was a great, great warrior. A young man who had set his sights on becoming a knight. And he was so, so brave, he could face the fiercest and the strongest of armies. But he had a secret fear, a terrible, terrifying fear of lepers. The moment he catches sight of a leper, his heart would beat fast. He would be overpowered by a sense of disgust and he would turn and flee for his life. He was not afraid of armies that could destroy him, but he was afraid of helpless lepers. Friends, what about you and me? Is there any such irrational fear and disgust that has power over us? We all have likes and we also have dislikes. Now, do you like the rain? I love the rain. And not only that, I think the rain loves us. Now, looking about likes and dislikes, now, we could like certain things, like for instance, we could like the sight of the sun rising and we could dislike certain things. For instance, I could dislike a person who uses foul language, but rather because the person is my friend, what I don't like is just the sound of those foul words. It doesn't affect me tremendously. Now, sometimes our likes are reasonable, and sometimes our likes and dislikes are unreasonable. Now, how do you know when a like or a dislike is reasonable? Well, for instance, I don't like brinjal because it's squishy. Now, if someone can prepare it without it being squishy, I would love it. Now, this is a reasonable dislike. Now, there are strong likes and strong dislikes as well. Now, these have the power to control us. For instance, I really dislike prawns, but I have a friend who loves prawns. She relishes it so much. And I know so many people who really relish prawns. And then I realized the problem is not with a poor prawn. I dislike the prawn, not because a prawn has a problem. Everybody else loves prawns. But I dislike prawns because there is a problem within me. Now, when it comes to likes and dislikes of things and eatables, it is okay. You can call it reasonable, unreasonable. But when it comes to people, it becomes serious. We could like certain people. We could dislike certain things in people and that is acceptable. But we could have strong dislikes. And that is where we need to be watchful. Now, for instance, I really like Pope Francis. Why? I have a reason. I know he's lived such a heroic life and he's such a merciful person. And this is usually true in families. We could strongly love someone. So whatever they do, we are able to see beyond their flaws and still support them and be patient for them and pray for them. And, and be a blessing to them. And we still consider them as a blessing to us. But then, talking about strong dislikes. Now this is a problem, real problem. We see a lot of it on social media. We dislike someone and we don't know why we dislike that person. Whatever we see in that person brings disgust to us. It could happen in our professional situations in our communities. Why? Even in the family. You could say that I just can't stand this person, some in-law. It could even be your spouse. And here is where we need to see the problem is not with that person. Like in the case of the prawn and me, the problem is not with that person whom we dislike but with ourselves. Now, when we have a strong disgust and hatred towards someone, whether there be a reason for it or no reason for it, the fact is that someone is loved by God. 
and loved intensely by God. So what do we need to do? We need to ensure that we root out that disgust from our hearts. And the only way is this. We need to encounter Christ. The moment my eyes are able to look at Jesus, the moment the scales are removed from my eyes and I am able to experience God, automatically, as a natural consequence, I begin to love everyone. And that is why we need to go back to St. Francis of Assisi. I told you that he hated the sight of lepers. He fled from them. But this same Francis of Assisi, when he encountered Jesus, when he fell in love with Jesus, the first thing he would do is to go back to those lepers and he would embrace them and kiss their wounds and care for them because in them he saw the face of Jesus. If Francis of Assisi could see the face of Jesus in the lepers whom he despised, you and I should be able to see Jesus in every person we have encountered. Look at St. Paul. When he was Saul, he hated the Christians and his agenda was to destroy the Christians, to kill them, to take them, arrest them and have them wiped out. But when he encountered Jesus, it is said he saw a blinding light and scales were removed from his eyes. And from that moment, he lived with a burning passion for Jesus and for the Christians. Dear friends, the word of God says, if you say you love God and despise a brother, you are a liar. Well, it's not to make you feel bad, but the fact is this, if I am not able to appreciate someone, I need to know, I don't have to struggle and, and try to change anyone else. I don't even have to give up on myself and say, oh, I just can't stand someone. A person who says, I just can't stand someone is only revealing that their God connection has been cut off. So what do we need to do? Every time we see someone whom we despise, we need to know that is a reminder that we need to encounter Jesus. Seek the Lord and when you find him, when you see him, you will see love flowing out of your heart for every human person. Yes, the secret to being free from hatred and disgust is not about changing anything else or changing anyone else. It is about encountering Jesus. He who loves God, will love his neighbor. The new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this all men will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Now we, you see, there are so many strained relationships in your families, and in the people you work, or, the, you know, or even in the, in the Christian community. And then we are praying and Jesus is saying, get your relationships right. So for me the sign, for me the sign that Jesus is the Lord of my life is, is when relationships are strained, what do I do? Do I justify them? Do I excuse them? Do I say no, it's his fault, it's not my fault? No, 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 no. He says, you'll be known as my disciples by the love you have one for another. And do you know for me, what is the, what is the challenge of Christianity? Do you know what this love is? Love your friends. Love your enemies. Do good to them that hate you. Bless them that curse you. And pray for them that persecute you. This is the love of God. This is what Jesus is referring to. Get your relationships. Otherwise we become a counter witness. People will say, oh he's a hypocrite. He says, you know, he preaches so much. But look at his life. He's not in a right relationship with this person. He's angry with this person. He's hurt with this person. And everything, it's, it's, it's a counter witness. And just now, now the, the love of God enables us to love our neighbor. You see, without his love, my love, my... 
in myself my love is selfish my self is con- my love is conditional that's why we struggle but when god's unconditional love flows into my heart he enables me to love and forgive that's why it's so important to connect to the vine if you don't connect to jesus you cannot forgive you cannot love and when you don't love you're living a dysfunctional life it won't life will not function for you life will be a struggle for you jesus in john 14:15 in john 14:15 jesus says if you love me keep my commandments so my obedience to jesus my obedience to jesus is directly proportional to my experience of his love if my if the experience of his love in my life is that much i can only love that much but if it is that much i can love that much. so continually i have to open my soul to the love of god because it's only in the because when i'm filled with his love i am able to obey him i'm able to forgive i'm able to reconcile and be at peace with my brothers and sisters the love of god will urge me and i know and 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 what to say encourage me and motivate me and say get right get right pray for the person release that unforgiveness release that bitterness release that anger release that hurt feeling give it to me i will heal you i will free you but i must be willing to love and then jesus will work the miracle in my heart if you're not willing to love he cannot work rather love to walk in the rain right but friends we know there are some things that are wise and some things that are unwise and the most unwise thing is to keep hatred in our hearts friends let us now go to jesus because it is he who will give us the holy spirit and the word of god promises us in romans 5:5 that the holy spirit will pour love into our hearts so that we can love the very people who are unlovable come let us adore jesus who is like him lion and the lamb seated on the throne mountains bow down ocean rules to the lord of hosts praise and honor from the rising of the sun to the end of every Shepherd Lord we adore you Lord we praise you Lord hallelujah hallelujah praise adore from the rising of the sun to the end of every like you No one can be compared to you oh God You're awesome in your majesty in your power in your glory Let the angels and saints sing praises to you 
this morning, oh God, I come to worship you. Because truly you are worthy. You who are enthroned in the highest heavens. As the psalmist says in Psalm 113, Who is like you, O God? How awesome are you? And the one thing that overwhelms me, O God, is that each day, you come to me, inviting me into your presence. As you desire to bestow upon me graces and mercies. Your word says, O oh God, to prophet Isaiah, you proclaimed that the Lord longs to be gracious to you. And therefore he will rise up to show you compassion for the Lord is a God of justice. Blessed are all who wait for him. Lord, I pray to you and I come to you, Lord. In the words of the psalmist, crying out to you that you listen to me, Lord. My help Oh my King, I pray. The psalmist prays in Psalm 5. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. And in the morning, I lay my requests before you and wait for you in expectation. Yes, O Jesus. I come to you consecrating myself once again. At the beginning of the day, I consecrate my body, my mind, my soul, my work, my family, all that I am, O oh God, I give to you. Because it is in you that I have my life. It is in you that I move and I have my being. Apart from you, O oh God, I have nothing that I can claim for myself. I place all my petitions, all my requests, I make known to you, O God. Because I know, O God, and I trust that you will provide for me according to your riches in glory. For you are my refuge and my fortress, and I will not be moved, I will not fear. I know, oh God, the situation of the world today is one that causes fear to lurk in your heart. But I count on your word. I hold on to your word. The psalmist prays in Psalm 46 that even though the earth give way and the mountains fall, into the heart of the sea, those waters roar and foam and the mountains quake, I will still remain secure. As the Lord Almighty is with me, the God of Jacob is my fortress. Yes, Lord, I count on your promise that you are with me. You will be with me all through the day. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank, for your, thank you for your promise. Thank you for your word, oh God. Thank you. Oh Jesus, I truly open up my heart, placing all my requests, all my petitions in your hands with thanksgiving. And so I know that the peace that surpasses all understanding will guard my mind and my soul in you. Truly, I want to thank you. And I take these moments, oh God, to just come to you with a thankful and a grateful heart.
seated in your presence fill me lord with your love anoint me afresh with your spirit lord it is your love that you exhibit when you pour out your spirit into us it is your promise that you will never leave us oh holy spirit spirit of the living god you are the counselor my helper you are the one who can comfort me you are the one who will guide me i pray at the beginning of this day that you fill me with the joy and gladness of the lord let his joy become my strength let me be filled with a new zeal and hope desiring for his kingdom above everything else oh spirit of god give me your grace that i might give up my ways and i might yield and submit to his ways that i might truly not rely on my understanding but rather surrender and trust in his plans for my life o oh, holy spirit all through the day let you walk ahead of me let you have your way in me i want to walk the way that jesus wants me to walk i want to follow him guide my thoughts my desires my inclinations my decisions have your way in my life oh spirit of god have your way in my life have your way 
especially come to you lord with those areas where i struggle with lord where i am weak and vulnerable lord where i really need your grace where i tend to take decisions on my own i do not rely on you where i am so stubborn and unyielding oh god oh spirit of god at the very offset i pray that those moments you embrace me and you give me the grace to submit i need your power more than anything else because my spirit though it is willing but my flesh is weak i ask you to empower me and to you that you might have your way Let the word of God resound in my heart that will empower me remind me of his promises remind me of everything that my lord wants of me oh holy spirit give me a heart give me a ear that is always desiring to listen to him have your way have your we have your way have your way have your way holy spirit fill our hearts and have your way even as i wait on you let you rekindle let you ignite the fire in my heart let your counsel and your wisdom take control of my reasoning my logic my understanding that i might discern the will of god as we wait
our lives, our hearts, our hands, our life, our entire being, Lord, we lift it up to you and we praise you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Bless me, Lord, with your power, with your grace, with your mercy, with your spirit, O oh Lord, with your wisdom, your knowledge, your understanding, O oh God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Speak your word into our hearts and have your way. You have been blessed by Jesus. And he reveals to us that the channels of blessing is the broken bread and the broken people around us. The people whom we see as mistakes. So let us go out today and bless and praise God and open our hearts to love the least of our brethren. God bless you and may you have a beautiful, brilliant, blessed day with Jesus and loving the people of God. The Ministry of the Divine Retreat Center needs your support as they continue in their commitment to preach the good news of Jesus through the weekly retreats, the daily online and television ministry, through the service of 3,000 disadvantaged persons, the mentally challenged, the aged, the destitute women, the sick and abandoned and economically disadvantaged families. If you are inspired to share in this ministry through the sacred service of almsgiving, we invite you to send your love offering to Divine Charitable Trust, CD account number 04022310000014, HDFC Bank, Chalakudi Branch, IFSC code HDFC 0000402. And email the details to divine retreat center at gmail.com.